Okay, so in this talk, I'll cover the equivalence of certain definitions of group. And basically, there's two definitions. I won't go into the full definitions, which you hopefully should know. But the main difference between the definitions is as follows. So one definition assumes only the group multiplication as part of the group structure. And then it says, oh, that multiplication is associative. It has an identity element and every element has a two-sided inverse. So the identity element and the inverses are not in that definition a part of the group structure. Okay, they're just additional conditions that the group operation has to satisfy. In the other definition, the group multiplication, identity element, and inverse operation are all part of the group structure. Okay? So now I want to claim that these two definitions are actually equivalent. Okay, what would I need to show in order to say that actually there's no information theoretic difference between these two definitions? Hmm? You have to show that the identity element and inverse operation defined as a part of this group structure of this from the second definition is equivalent to. Well, actually, what you want to do is you want to start with the first definition. You want to say, according to the first definition, an identity element and inverse operation do exist, right? We just don't know if it's uniquely determined by the group multiplication. If we did know that these two things are uniquely determined by the group multiplication, then would we have shown that the two definitions are equivalent? Hmm? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Because if the identity element and inverses are uniquely determined by the group multiplication, then whether you just specify the group multiplication or whether you give all three pieces of information, it's the same thing, right? Yeah. Okay. So why are those two things true? So is the identity element uniquely determined by the group operation and is the inverse operation uniquely determined? Let me write this one. So identity element is uniquely determined by the group multiplication. Why is that? Hmm? Mm. We can show. What do we need to show? I mean, what, what have we already shown? Hopefully, if you've seen previous videos, what have we shown which shows this? We've shown that in any yeah. set with any binary operation, not necessarily a group, okay? any set with any binary operation, the identity element is unique. And how do we show it? We show that if you have a left identity element, which I call a left neutral element, identity elements are also called neutral elements. Mm -hmm. So we showed that if there's a left neutral element and there's a right neutral element, they have to be equal. And so if there's a two-sided neutral element or a two-sided identity element, it's uniquely determined. Okay? So we showed this for any magma, basically. So we show that if, if a two-sided thing exists, then it's unique. Okay. What is the second thing we need to show? What's the next thing we need to show? What other thing do we need to show determined by the multiplication? Consistence of inverse. Yeah, or rather what exactly the inverse is, right? We need to show that that there's sort of only one choice for the inverse once we fix the multiplication. Why is this true? We showed it. That what did we show? We showed that in a monoid, if there's a left inverse and a right inverse, they're equal. Right? Mm -hmm. So we showed, well, I won't write the left right thing here, but that, that's a, the background thing we used. Okay? We showed uniqueness of two sided inverses in a monoid. So the second thing actually 
the uniqueness for inverses that requires associativity whereas the uniqueness of identity element doesn't okay but since in a group we have associativity as well that's not an issue okay and that's why these two definitions are equivalent now which of these two definitions do you think is nicer the two equivalent definitions hmm? uh, to me the first one is nicer why well you don't have to define the things that it's not necessary to be defined yeah, well, the first one is sort of more minimalistic, right? Yeah, that's the word. Minimalism. Yeah. Uh, the second one is cleaner, however, in another sense. With the second one. So the first one is minimalistic. Okay, is the right one. The second one, however, it's nicer to prove. It's easier to prove facts using the second definition. It's easier to use... some general ideas about the uh, way algebraic structures work because all the axioms in the second one are universally quantified. So with the second definition, the axioms which say that the group multiplication is associated with the identity element is actually an identity element and the inverse operation is actually an inverse operation. All those three axioms are quantified with for all A, B, C or for all. There's no existential quantifiers. There's nothing which says there exists something in the axioms. And that makes it easy to, to use certain kinds of proof techniques or certain kinds of proof things. So, so that's not so clear right now, but both ways of writing it have their advantage. And the good thing about groups is that these two different ways of thinking about it give the same structure. Okay.